Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up, what up, college football previews? I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all your favorite podcast apps. Make it easy on yourself. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. We got everything you need to know over there. We are pumped. College football preview season is here. The magazines are out. Everybody's ready to rock and roll. We're going to give you what we think. We've already done the MAC East and the MAC West. We're jumping into Conference USA. Now, in order to get all these done before the season started, we got to start a little early. Yes. So, guys, it's June. It's it's early June. It's early June. So, this is pre recorded, by the way. Conference Uh, USA East, right? Yes, we're starting with the East. So, this episode will be Conference USA East. We're starting out with Charlotte. Okay. Now, before we do that, though. Oh. BetNow.eu. Use promo code WINNING50. You'll get a 50% deposit bonus. Great online sports book. They got a great layout. They treat us well. They will treat you well. I promise you, go check it out for yourself. It's awesome. Like You've seen it. It's right. cool. It, everything about it's good. BetNow.eu. Jump in on your web browser. Go check that bad boy out. Use promo code WINNING50 for a 50% deposit bonus. Now, let's jump in. Come on. The Charlotte 49ers went 5-7 and seven last year, 4-4 four and four in the league. Returning starters, they got 5 on offense, 8 on defense. New head coach Will Healy he takes over for Brad Lambert. Uh, look, Austin P was 1-34 before Healy was hired back in 2016. He went 13-21 in three seasons. He went 0-11 the first year, transition year, right? 8-4, and four, made the playoffs. Five and six in his last season, and then he jumps to Charlotte. Good job for him. I That's right. Uh, this, I think this so is, too. This I think is it's a good really spot. Good job. Will Healy is. You will hear this name a lot. Um, now I think this year, again, transition year. Okay, could be kind of difficult. Offense was a problem last year. It probably will be again this year. Uh, the defense finished number twenty-two in total D in, two, uh, in 2018, number nine against the run. And they will start all upperclassmen on defense. Now, the scheme is going to change. Yes, he's going to to bring in a different defensive style. Exactly. He's going to bring in different guys and whatnot. I love Will Healy. Uh, The schedule, not uh, the easiest, right? They they open up with Gardner-Webb, so I got to win there. I got them going four and eight, three and five in the league. Uh, They drop a game in the league. They drop a game overall. I don't think that that means that they are worse. I think that it's a, a difficult schedule. I mean, they've got at App State, UMass, at Clemson, Florida Atlantic, at FIU, at Western Kentucky, North Texas, Middle Tennessee, at UTEP, Marshall, and at Old Dominion. I think they win the the easier games, and I think the tougher games, I, I just, first-year coach, first-year staff, Yes, they got some experienced guys, but they're in new systems and everything. I think it's a, it's going to be a tough season. I like upperclassmen. We've had this conversation before. That'll be a broken record for the teams that have upperclassmen. And uh, I, I like this thing. I think they're going to improve a game. I mean, we're, we're pretty different in the East. We, yeah. We never talk before the thing starts. Our East stuff and our West stuff, on the East side, we're pretty different. We're pretty different. I got them West. six and six. I, I like this team. I like Will Healy. I I think I think those upperclassmen coming in on defense are going to improve. I think they're going to get better. It's, I just wonder if the scheme will actually fit with nah. that. It, it, see, and again, we're in De- June. Defense, I don't, that's right. We don't know. And, and defense is easier to adapt to than offense. When you're changing defensive schemes, I don't think it's as complicated or as difficult as it is saying, hey, we run a pro-style offense under center. Now, all of a sudden, everything's shotgun and spread or whatever. Like, like I think it's easier to change defensive philosophies than it is offense. And you might be right. You might be right. So, uh, so I've, I've got four and eight. You've got but six I like and this six. team. Yeah, six and six. Let's jump in. Florida International, FIU. <coughs> Butch Davis, man. Excuse me. Nine and four last year, six and two in the conference. Seven guys returning on offense, six on defense. Butch Davis, he's gone 17 and nine in two years. This is probably the best coach team in the league. 
Uh, I think maybe without a doubt. Let's, uh, I'll, I'll take out the problem. This is yeah. the best coach team in the league. Butch, Butch Davis is a yeah. legit coach. Yes. Uh, quarterback James Morgan, he's a senior. Uh, they got their top four running backs back, four of their top five wide receivers. They do lose four guys on the offensive line. Uh, now, due to injuries, they do have experience coming I, back. I was just about to say, usually that scares me. This is kind of one of those situations yeah. where the guy starting now – Got a actually, lot of playing yeah, time actually last played year. Long. They got a lot of reps. So. Now, the defense gave up 192.2 yards per game rushing. Yeah. Uh, number 92 in the country, number 12 out of 14 in conference year. Say, if they can fix that, the pass defense is going to be one of the best in the country. The schedule sets up for a possible, not, now I don't think they will, but a possible 9-0 start. But, man, they close tough. They close at Florida Atlantic, Miami, Florida, and at Marshall. Like, that is a brutal stretch down there. Uh, I like FIU a lot. Do too. I got them going nine and three, seven and one in conference. Woo, nine and three. Okay. Yeah. I, I like them I, just because I think there's going to be some shakeup here. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm eight and four here. Okay. I can understand so. that. So, a, a game. It, well, actually, same regular season record as they had last year. Yes. It doesn't change anything from, from how they finished last year. Other than the bowl game. All right. Now I'm nine and three, seven and one. Next up, Florida Atlantic. FAU Owls, Lane Kiffin's a bunch. Went five and seven last year, three and five in the uh, Conference USA. Returning starters, they got six on offense, five on defense. Look, Kiffin's a bunch went 11 and three in 2017. Looked like they were the next big thing. They dropped to five and seven last year. That was after they replaced offensive coordinator Kendall Browles with Charlie Weiss Jr. The Charlie Weiss Jr. was not the problem last year. They also had to replace their defensive coordinator. Uh, the offense was number 14 in the country in total offense, but they scored 31.1 points per game. That was down from 40.8 in 2017. This is their third defensive coordinator in three years. Uh, Glenn Spencer, this is Charlotte's old Correct. defensive coordinator. Uh, they, they were number 22 in total defense last year. Uh, the defense has talent. Quarterback Chris Robeson, he was suspended the entire spring. Uh, he's a transfer from Oklahoma. He he can play, so we know that he's good. Uh, Indiana transfer, uh, Nick, what's his name, Tronny? Tronty? I, I don't even know who he is, but he apparently he looked good in spring, according to all the reports. And now they've got DeAndre Francois, who is going to be a walk-on, but I don't even know if Francois is going to be able to play. They got talent. Across the board, it is whether or not they're going to know what to do with them. Okay, right? I got them nine and three. I know, and I got them seven and one in the this division. Is, this is and I got them are. winning the division. Way different. I got them winning the division. They finished five and seven last year. I got them five and seven again this year. I I like this team. I don't love this team. I got I, them losing I, the first two. I like I like Lane Kipton. I don't love Lane Kipton. <laughs> I'll, never mind. We'll just leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. All right. All right. And I mean, I've, obviously, at Ohio State, they get UCF at home. You, it, it, any chance they can pull a. No, nothing on that one, huh? All right. I've got them losing at home to Marshall, but I got them don't, winning everything don't, else. Don't question my American love. Uh, now, listen. You'll, never, you'll li- never question my American love. Listen to this schedule. I mean, they got at Ball State, Wagner at Charlotte, Middle Tennessee at home. At Old Dominion, at Western Kentucky, Florida International at home, at UT San Antonio, and Southern Miss. All of the the Hard. lesser teams yeah. are on the road. That's the right. tougher games are at home. The difference is, is that I sets think, up well. I think those tougher teams are just big. At the, like, they'll beat you at home, too. Like, it's just okay. Okay, okay. It doesn't mean they're going to be trash. We're 5-7. 5-7 five and seven. Five I, and seven I think, is not an awful record. I think Charlie Weiss Jr., his offense was pretty good last year. They they failed in some scoring opportunities, uh, my, my but I issue, think the defense gets significantly better with Glenn Spencer. I don't know that we can, I don't know that we can define definitively better, just just because we don't know we don't know what's going to happen here. My problem with a Lane Kipton coach team is always going to be the same thing, just the lack of discipline that anybody is going to have. And now you've got three quarterback transfers that all have issues. Yeah. Now, now, dude from Illinois, whatever. I don't know anything about that guy or Indiana. Like, 
I'm not blaming any of these. Francois has got issues, all right? Quarterback from last year's got issues, okay? This is my issue with Lane Kipton teams, which is why I'm going to have a hard time a month and a half before season starts ever picking them to do anything. They've got to prove it to me. They just have to. I can understand And right now they haven't. The reason I thought it was cool that they won 11 games last year or two years when, when he first got there, that's great, but I didn't think that was repeatable. I just I just didn't because teams that are undisciplined just don't do that. Defense was number 85 in the country last year, 424 uh, yards per game. At scoring gave up 31.8 points per game. Like I, They're going to be entertaining. They're going to be and really Lane, entertaining. And Lane is awesome. And I don't think get that me in wrong. this conference, in this division, I think that they can – I think they can win this division. And you are correct. The schedule does set up well for them. Yes. They got to win those home games. Yeah, I think if I, I think if I use good, I don't know that you're just going to say well, if they use good or if, if I use good. Okay, you, I don't know that you can just say, well, we get them at home, so we're going to win that game. Like I, I don't, I don't know well, about last, that. Last year, Florida Atlantic was five and seven. They beat the brakes off if I use. That's right. That's right. So I mean, it's it, these things can happen. I'm not. I think that's that is the game on the schedule that that Lane looks at. Because that was who everybody you're, compared them to. You're right? probably right. You're probably and and that's Butch. That's, yeah, I don't think it is, matters as much to Butch. That is a guy that's been coaching forever. You're yeah. right. That matters more to Lane to beat him than it does for Butch to beat Lane. Cause, exactly. Because Butch doesn't know who Lane is. Yeah, pretty he, much. He, he just thinks he's him kid. Pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Let's move off of that. Let's move to the Marshall Thundering Herd. I want it to have this team a better record than I have them. Doc Holiday, man. I really like this team a lot. Went nine and four last year, six and two in conference USA. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, six on defense. Holiday is seventy and forty six in nine years. It, can you believe it's been nine years that he's been there? I was just about to say he's been there way longer than I thought he had. I thought he would. I thought he would have hopped to a power five by now. But I, I, he's got a, a. He's got it rolling. No, I think he's happy. Yeah, uh, Charlotte's head coach or former head coach Brad Lambert is their new defensive coordinator. They lost their defensive coordinator to Memphis. Um, I mean, Marshall was really good on defense last year. Uh, sophomore quarterback Isaiah Green, CUSA All-Freshman, he returns with a ton of experience on the offensive line, running back, and wide receiver. Defense was number 25 in the country, number 8 in the country against the run, 104.2 yards per game last year. They lose a ton of front seven experience, but I, I think they've got some talent there. The schedule looks like maybe one and four to start. I mean, you got VMI, but then you at Boise, uh, Ohio, Cincy, and at MTSU. So it's it, at MTSU, winnable maybe. Um, it's, good. it's just going to be a tough that, game. That's a that's a difficult front five, right? You, you're going to get the win against VMI, correct? But then, can you win any of the next four? That's what this is going to I think the goal is – this is where I don't like to say I think they'll win this game. I, I don't think they'll win this game. I, I look at that and say you got to come out with one. Yeah. you got to come out one and three in that four bunch. The first five games, you got to come away two and three. Like don't even worry about the first five. Just worry about the back end. That's right. And you'll be all right. And you'll be, and you'll be good. I've got them at seven and five. got them six and two in the MAC. I, I, in the uh, in conference USA. in conference USA. I've got the same record. I want it so bad to get them to eight and four. I really did. There's just a couple of those coin flip games. I think, I think it's going to be tough. I think they can win at Middle Tennessee. I think they beat Old Dominion. I think they lose at Florida Atlantic. I think they beat Western Kentucky at Rice, Louisiana Tech at Charlotte, and then I think they lose at home to FIU at the end of the year. That's just how I've got it. That's right. And so you you lose to you know Cincy. Ohio and Boise, and there's nothing. And to then you lose at. to the two Florida teams. At seven and five is a really good record. And hey, here. it. I don't. I don't know that you can't win one of those games. One of those top three non-conference games. They're I mean, tough it's, teams. It's possible. They're really good teams. Upsets happen every day in college football. Yeah, and so. and Marshall is. I mean, they're good. They're good. They're good. They're good. They're well coached. They won Very a great disciplined. bowl game last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's move on from there. Middle Tennessee State. MTSU Blue Raiders. I don't think they go by MTSU anymore, do they? I thought they did. I still call them MTSU. But but I'm if if you I went to old. MTSU or you are a, a Middle Tennessee fan, you know who we can ask? We get we'll ask John in a couple months. That's a good point. I'll, I'll call him. Yeah, John. No, he'll be in Memphis tomorrow. That's. I mean, he, he was a Murray guy, but he played against him, so it's, it makes sense. He's John in the Moran, same conference. Yeah, yeah he's in the same. It, 
Yeah. Okay. He knows those guys. Maybe in ba- is, Are they in the same conference in basketball? Oh, maybe not. Maybe they're not. He did play against them, I believe. I, they were on the schedule, but but he didn't. I don't think they Either were. way. Um, all right, so MTSU, Middle Tennessee, whichever one it is. We don't mean to offend if it's not MTSU. Because uh, I think they're one of the teams that actually changed it up. Like They didn't want to be called that anymore. Either way, the Blue Raiders went 8-6 and six last year, 7-1 and one in Conference USA. They got five guys back on offense, six returning starters on defense. Head coach Rick Stockstill, offensive coordinator Tony Franklin. Uh, they won the East last year. They do not have all-everything quarterback Brent Stockstill back. Wide receiver Ty Lee, he's probably going to break team records for receptions, yards, and touchdown catches uh, this season. But the offense lost a ton to graduation. At defense, they they lack a big-time pass rusher. Linebackers are just kind of so-so. The two NFL safeties are joined by two really inexperienced cornerbacks. This is a major league rebuilding year. It's like, just a, I love Rick Stock still. I do, too. It's a but, really strangely built uh, team. The way they're coming into this season – with some experience, but it's the experience. But it's at weird spots. It's at weird spots. That's yeah. it. It's like, oh man. Uh, in 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 losing your son, who was just a in had an incredible season. Yeah, last it's, year it, he was. Well, he had an incredible career. That's right. right. No, like, yeah, he, he had great. some injuries here and there over the years, but man, last when he year was just in. seemed like a magical season for him. Yeah. I was super excited watching him. Loved every game. No, only one game I really rooted against him for, and that was the championship game, and that's that's yeah. understandable. That's a, well, I mean, you're a, you're a Bill Clark my, guy. My guy, Bill. As soon as Bill leaves one day, then then I'll get back on you. But. There you go. Um, so, I mean, they start out at Michigan, Tennessee State, Duke, and at Iowa. That is a, a murderer's row for a school of this size. Oh, no. Go that's, take the that's checks. That's difficult. No, yeah, take ca- the checks, cast dude. Cast the money, man. That's a cha-ching. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of cha-ching there. There's but. a couple of CFU <laughs> coverage USA teams that are cashing checks this year. I... I think they drop off a lot. I think this is a rebuilding year. Uh, this is not the kind of program that can just retool. I think this is rebuild. Okay. And I think they have to start from the bottom up. Uh, I think you will see, you know, this team get better as the season goes along. But I mean, I've got them. I got them four and eight, three and five in uh, in Conference USA. And I mean, I've got them winning three of their last four games. But I think early on, I mean, look, I told you, at Michigan, Tennessee State, Duke, at Iowa, then it's Marshall, at FAU, at North Texas, FIU. And that's before you get to at Charlotte, Rice, Old Dominion, at Western Kentucky. Your easiest games are backloaded. That's right. It is brutal to start with. When you got all those non-conference games to start with. And and you've got yeah. you got a brand-new guy coming in at quarterback. So, you know. I, 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 I just – Maybe I'm giving too much credit to the head coach and the system that I've seen be there for so long, but I just feel like we're, we're just going to not plug and play guys because that's not the kind of system they run, but I just can't see them falling off that much. I like this team, but I but I like this program. So I've got them still 7-5. and five. I got them a game off from last year. I could be way wrong, and there'd just be a lot of nostalgia there. I, I mean, we'll see, right? I got to see the trigger man. Clips. I got to yeah. see the trigger man. That's the most important thing between what what I think they'll finish and what you think they'll finish is who replaces the quarterback. Well, and, and the defense was a big part of what they did last year, and they Correct. they lose a lot. Right? Lose they, a lot. That's right. They, they don't have a, a big time pass rusher like like their defensive scheme needs. The linebackers, like I said, just so so. Two NFL safeties, which is good, but when you got two completely brand new, completely inexperienced cornerbacks. Like I, you know, we'll see, but I, I got them four and eight. You got them what? Seven and five. I got them seven and five. Pretty All big right. difference here. Let's, uh, let's move on to the next one. Old Dominion Monarchs went four and eight last year, two and six in the league. Got that huge win over Vitek, but this we'll talk about pissed that. Pissed me off. Uh, two offensive starters coming back. And the offense is what made this team go last year. Four de- uh, defensive starters coming back. Head coach Bobby Wilder, he's 76 and 45 in 10 years, uh, but they've only been in D1 for five years. He's right. gone six and six, five and seven, 10 and three, five and seven, four and eight. And I think everything falls down. I was about to say, it hasn't, uh, it hasn't 
tailed off too well. No, it's it, it wasn't great to start, but that's you're moving into D one. That's right. So that's you, normal. you got the magical year three years ago at ten and three, but then you don't build off of it. It goes five and seven, four, four and eight. eight. Uh, there's what a, do you think they got this year? It's a ton of roster turnover, especially on offense. They lost ninety two percent of their oh. catches. Um, all freshman quarterback Stephen Williams is returning. Defense was awful. Absolutely awful. Number 118 in total defense last year. Number 111 in scoring D. They you know what had a great game? They gave up 35.9 points per game last year. Against Vatek. Yeah. Justin Fuente. Even still, they just, gave up 35 points in that game, but they won 49 to 35. It's just ridiculous. Bro, broke my heart. Uh, maybe it's good that they only returned four starters on defense. <laughs> maybe. Because this of how one, bad they were last year. This is year. one of those situations. Where yeah. Don't tell me how many guys are coming back. Tell me how many guys that are coming back that were good. Yeah. Or that can get better. New defense coordinator, David Blackwell. He is installing a, an aggressive 4-2-5 scheme, which I like the 4-2-5 scheme. Um, well, I just like aggressive. But I don't, I, don't, I don't care what scheme you run yeah. in, in college football. Well, for these guys, I like for wanna, this team. I just want to blitz all the time. Yeah. Uh, Blackwell's only year at ECU, he saw him finish number 101 in total D with 439 yards per game. Uh, now, granted, you can't really get it's, a bunch it's, because it's East say, Carolina and it's whatever. I was just about to say, so he's I, a used hard road to hoe there playing defense. I think that he can change things, and I think he can do better because it it take a lot to be worse than 118, right? I agree. But uh, but I, I think like with the schedule, the way everything sets up, I don't like Old Dominion very much at all this year. I've got them two and ten. I got them one and seven in conference USA. I wanted to give them a goose egg because it, it ain't their fault. It was that's all that's on Fuente. That's <laughs> just broke my heart last year. Um, I, they do they they lose they lose a lot. He's progressively gotten worse the last couple of years. I yeah. think he gets one game worse, not two games. And uh, I, I got him three and nine. That's totally reasonable. They you take the Vitek win away. That's what they finished with last year. So yeah, I mean it's it, look. I, I've got them losing. I, they win the first game to me, losing at Virginia Tech, at Virginia to East Carolina, to Western Kentucky, at Marshall, at UAB, Florida Atlantic, at FIU, UT San Antonio. I've got them get uh, with a win at home there, uh, at Middle Tennessee. Uh, I've got a loss, and then I've got a loss to Charlotte at the end of the year. I just. I can't find where the wins are going to come from, and if they prove me wrong, well, so be it. Because I like that ten and three year sticks out like a sore thumb, man. It's but, a, it's definitely an anomaly. Yeah, you got that right. All right, let's close out with Western Kentucky. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers went three and nine last year, two and six in conference. They got nine guys back on offense, six back on defense. They uh they got rid of Mike Sanford. I think that guy, after two years, really had no idea what he was doing, what the culture is around that program. Uh, he wasn't a good fit. I mean, he came from Notre Dame. He, the guy can coach, but maybe he wasn't meant to be a head coach here. Former Tennessee offensive coordinator Tyson Helton is the new guy. He was the former Western Kentucky offensive coordinator under Jeff Brom. Lots of experience on offense. 10 of 11 starters are upperclassmen. Uh, total offense was number 102 last year, though. Now, this is going to be a, a brand-new scheme for this bunch. They're going to throw the ball all over the place. Defense coordinator Clayton White returns, uh, brings back good experience, especially on the defensive line. Offense put the unit in some really bad spots last year. I mean, that offense was atrocious, absolutely atrocious. Yeah, they are bad. They, they lost four games by three points last year. There is talent here, and a quick, a, a quick fix on offense could mean that they could end up in a bowl game. I think it's going to take a little bit longer for Tyson Helton to be able to get the reins here. Like, I understand, like, I think that he gets where he is, but he's a he's a newbie. He's a first-time head coach. That takes some getting used to. I've got them the exact same record as they were last year, 3-9, and 2-6 and six in conference, but I think you see uh, the foundation being built. Okay. I think you see uh, good things, even if the record isn't that great. I think we're going to have some transitional pains. Yeah. Is, is the way I see this. Um, I think they're going to regress a little bit, but this is one of those situations where you're going to regress and and you're going to begin to build a foundation. And maybe in three or four years, you begin to see fruits of this. But I don't see them getting better. I mean, I, 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 I see them getting better like wins at the here. end of the year. I give them some coin flip wins or some some coin flip losses, which which they probably can win those. I got them 1-11, but... 
if they finish two and ten or three and nine, I, I it don't wouldn't surprise you. It doesn't surprise me because I think some of the bad teams that they play, I just think I'm kind of going with coin flip and who they get at home and in, in that situation. I think, and we'll talk about this. I'm going to kind of sound like a broken record if you listen to all these previews that we do. There is a definition of the haves and the have-nots in every conference, and yeah. those change over years. They've changed a lot. Well, and if if you make the wrong hire, like Western Kentucky, that's right. Did, it, it can set you back. It can set you back for a while. Yeah. And to get back to that Brom stage, I don't know that a guy that coached under him can just walk in and say, "Here, I'm here. Let's fix it." I think you got to find new guys to come in, and at some point, get those guys to buy into your system or to play better. I, I just don't know that it can be fixed in a year. Yeah. I and think I think a lot of times when you change the head coach over, I, I think it, you, you go backwards before you go forwards. Yes. And that's, I, I agree. I think it, the same record, three and nine, two and six for me, at that same record, it feels like bottom for Western Kentucky for a fan base that is uh, so entrenched there. They are so oh, yeah. into that school. They're very passionate. That's right. Um, I think that three and nine is about as bad as it could get. They're, they're, they don't they don't know they're the little guy. They don't like being the little guy. Yeah, I mean, so, there was and they're going to do whatever. Push, they were pushing people around. They they fired a guy after two years. Yeah, like and and he was coming in with a brand new everything, brand new scheme, all the. But, but you know but how it I didn't feel fit. about that. I like that. Yeah, as soon as you know you have a losing hand, go ahead, you fold it. Yeah, if you and that's, know and that's this guy can't do it, and he ain't your guy. Let's just, I'm, yep. write him his check and move on down the road. There you go. There you go. All right, so that's going to wrap up. Who you got uh, winning this the thing? Conference USA East. Uh, Florida Atlantic, East. you said that. Yeah, I've got FAU. I've got and Florida I've, Atlantic. And I've got FIU winning it. And so either one of those would not surprise me. I've got no. I've got FIU going 7-1, and one, but I've got them losing to Florida Atlantic. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's who I've got representing this bunch. You can find out who we think is going to actually win the conference in the next show. All right, we appreciate you guys. Share the show out for us. Remember, betnow.eu. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe on all the different platforms, YouTube, all the podcasts and whatnot. Leave us a nice review on Apple Podcast. We'll see you next go around. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.